it has been a, a, a massive seven months in the making, right? We've seen the progress of Manchester United over the past seven months. For, for, for Manchester United fans that want to be, you know, somewhat cautious, I've I said it, speak, come out, banter them. This is a very, very big result. Forget about whether it is, some, some people might want to say it is just the Carabao Cup. Bro, how many teams have won this Carabao Cup in the past seven years? Only Manchester City. And who? And who? Liverpool now. And Liverpool. Uh, <laughs> so, in the past seven years, only my dad is a that all of us get won the Carabao now. Cup. Ooh, so, ooh. it is not, it, it's easy for somebody to come out and say, oh, you just won the... No, bro. The progress over the past couple of weeks, the progress over the past couple of months, it is amazing. It is big. And kudos to my side United. The Red Army goes marching on. Thank you. Okay, are you done? Yo, what's up people? Welcome back to yet another episode of Shangalo. It's been an exciting past few days in the world of football. Coming Week coming into right now, it's the business end of the season, so the business is happening. The first trophy has been played for and has been awarded to Manchester United. Not, it beating. wasn't just awarded, it was won. Fair and square. With blood, sweat and tears, it was won. Okay, can I continue my intro? Yeah, please so Manchester intro. United have won the, um, the Carabao Cup. Congratulations to them. Um, a trophy for Ten Hag in his first season on the job. Um, yeah, good trophy. How are you feeling? Massive, massive, massive. I mean, I, I, I've been down bad this past weekend. I had malaria, unfortunately. Um, but this is a very, very big result for Manchester United. A big win. Now, before this game, we'd had a Europa League game on Thursday night. On Thursday night, Newcastle United had the entire week to prepare. And coming into the game on Sunday, you could see that freshness of Newcastle as against the fatigue in the legs of Manchester United, in the legs of Manchester United players. But the pedigree came to the fore. The, 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 the intelligence came to the fore. The tactical awareness came to the fore. You know, the ability, the quality of the squad overall came to the fore. It has been a, a, a massive seven months in the making, right? We've seen the progress of Manchester United over the past seven months. For, for, for Manchester United fans that want to be, you know, somewhat cautious, I, I've said it, speak, come out, banter them. This is a very, very big result. Forget about whether it is, so, some people might want to say it is just the Carabao Cup. Bro, how many teams have won this Carabao Cup in the past seven years? Only Manchester City. And who? And who? Liverpool now. And Liverpool. Uh, <laughs> so, in the past seven years, only my that and all of us get have won the Carabao now. Cup. Ooh, so, ooh. it is not, it, it's easy for somebody to come out and say, oh, you just won the... No, bro. The progress over the past couple of weeks, the progress over the past couple of months, it is amazing. It is big. And kudos to my side United. The Red Army goes marching on. Thank you. Okay, are you done? <laughs> There's more right. to be said. Depend, depend on what you say, because I know you. All right. You're about to say some, some you're about to chat some was. Why so, is your, why are you guys you say anything, I'm here for you. I congratulated you now. Even though I'm not feeling fine. I'm sorry. I'm here for um, you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, congratulations to uh, Manchester United, um, the Carabao Cup win. Um, nice, cute little trophy there. Um, Hats off to them. <laughs> but um, yeah, we can move trophy. on to, um, so around the world of football, like we mentioned, it is the business end of the season and things happen everywhere. And um, somewhere where um, a very important result took place was in the Bundesliga, actually. Mm. So um, Bayern Munich went up against Union Berlin, who are high up there, of which course, top three, and one of the top three teams. In they just Liga. blew them away. And so the Bayern are now tied up with Dortmund on 46 points, with Union Berlin on 43 points. This was a very big game, a six-pointer, and Bayern prevailed. And another piece of news from that game is that Sadio Mane is back on the pitch for the first time since November. Of course, I mean th this is something that the uh, Bayern Munich fans have wanted to see over, you know, over the course of the season. He had a not so great start at Bayern Munich and mm -hmm. then he had that injury and you know him coming back featuring in this game mm -hmm. very very big result for Bayern Munich uh, but of course it's, it's just interesting to see that Bayern Munich are not running away with it again yeah. you know as we've you know as we've passed it's the Lewandowski it. void and the fact that they brought Mane to fill that void and it just hasn't worked out like that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the team is lacking something at, at the end of the day it's just great to see Shah that like you know Dortmund are coming back into mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. you know even Union Berlin were right in right yeah. in the thick of it and it's just it's, there's still there's still a long way to go it's just three points now between Union Berlin and Bayern Munich themselves exactly and you know we, we never can say what, what will happen before the end of the season and speaking on Dortmund they've reached a record of I think it's nine wins in a row. Yeah. I don't think they've lost since 
I think since, since, the, started since the World again, Cup, actually. I don't think Dortmund have lost, and now they are the level of points to Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich, this is a big time for them with Mane coming back. They've got the second leg to play against PSG, where they're two 0 Was it one? Yeah, I don't remember. Okay, so I really, yeah, they're winning that leg. So to see PSG out and have um, Sadio Mane back for the title to race could be very important. I just think it's interesting. Bayern Munich. That, I think it's interesting that you're talking about Dortmund's record since after the World Cup, mm. but before the show fully started, you were complaining about Marcus Rashford being judged by his form since after the World Cup. Question. So my, was my I, point question, being, question. Was mm -hmm. I complaining about Marcus Rashford from being judged after the World Cup? Was I complaining about how many times they are going to flog this dead horse? If you run the tip, I've come here to tell you guys that Rashford has been on form after the World Cup. We've heard now. Uh, uh, did football start after the World Cup? My We've point being, my point being, my point being, it's Have I ever not... mentioned Dortmund after the World Cup Can form? I speak? Not yet. Have I ever mentioned <laughs> Dortmund after the World Cup form? I would now, so let's mention it to the people. My point being, it is not a dead horse, right? It is it's a, a conversation horse, that man. has to be had. We'll be talking about after the World Cup in five years' time. You know, the... It's a conversation <laughs> that has to be had. It's a conversation that, sh that should continue to happen, right? This is a player that has played excellently since the World Cup okay. ended. He's a player that actually featured wonderfully for England even during the World Cup and was supposed to have been used even to greater effect at Ingl you know at the World Cup. Gary Sargent literally dulled himself not using Rashford okay. and especially not using him on the left-hand side where he's most prolific and you know Southgate I'm sure has come into every game uh, every Manchester United game watching Rashford and has been thinking wow why did I not use this player? Why did I not utilize this player? Why did I not use this player to Because he doesn't have the skills there to get good things out of players, to be honest. But, but that, speaking that, of... That, that's um, a Southgate situation. That's a Southgate excuse. <laughs> speaking of strikers that have been good since after the World Cup, let's speak of a striker that's just been on fire. Like, Victor Simer, you guys might be tired of hearing the name Victor Simer, but he's literally doing things that haven't been done before. So in um, Napoli's recent 2-0 win over Empoli, he got yet another goal, which has equaled Cristiano Ronaldo's record in Serie A for the most games scored consecutively. Consecutively, yes. I mean, what more can we say about that? That stat probably says it all. Like, the Serie A has seen some of the greatest strikers ever. Ronaldo, Nazario, Maradona played there. Cristiano Ronaldo, Higuain broke all those records. And Osimhen is doing things that have never been done in the history of the league. For me, it's crazy. For me, in my, in my opinion, I would say, if I can speak about Osimhen and, and the madness that he's doing in Serie A 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year, I will do it. Because that is what we should do as media people supporting our, our own. England, the Is British media, the no. British media will speak about players that are whack. Uh, speak about them and inflate their price. Their and someone will come and buy them. For and someone will come and buy them. That speaking, you know, but uh, and we don't do we don't do enough. I would say maybe we mm. don't do enough for our own. But this is an opportunity for us to do the same for our very own. Who is actually doing us proud? And mm -hmm. you see, man, we have a space on this on this. Bro, literally, you, literally, anytime literally. you're in the country, we're gonna find. Come you. through, come, come <laughs> we're through. Gonna we're gonna get you. We're gonna have you. Have to hear. Have to have you. But but the thing is, he is excellent at the moment and I still stand by the point that I made in the last episode. I believe he has even more goals in him. I believe if they are mm. able to find Osime more, he would bag more goals. He is a runner, he is a poacher, he is a, a finisher, he, he scores left, great right, goals in his head, the left touch he is literally a complete striker and I believe if the Napoli uh, uh, playmakers can find Osime a bit more, he's, mm. going, he's, he's going to score even more goals. All right, that is so. That's the um, Syria rundown. Napoli are still running away with the league. So yeah, 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 yeah. The gap is probably closer to twenty points at the moment. Right, it's, it's crazy. Um, they've done well in their first leg of their Champions League game. Like the sky really is the limit for San Paoli and Osimhen and Napoli. Moving on from Syria, um, I think we're going to circle back to English football. We started yeah. at the Carabao Cup, but not league football. Um, it was another interesting week in the Premier League, of, as it always is. Um, the biggest game of the weekend was Chelsea versus Spurs. Um, this was an opportunity for Chelsea to, I guess, get some pride back. London Derby, and we mentioned a lot how form goes out the windows in derbies, but the form stayed ever present in the room right there with Chelsea for another year. Um, so it, 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 it's, it's sad for Chelsea fans to see, and we, we've actually not had it's our in-house, our in-house Chelsea supporter. We're scared of him. Now we believe you guys. We believe. We believe. <laughs> we we believe. <laughs> it hasn't been this bad. Yeah, you guys have been seeing it. Now we don't, uh, we don't want. We don't want our set destroyed. We don't want. You see, we have new chairs. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we've not had him here, and for good reason. Chelsea fans are down bad. Um, it, it, it's 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 crazy. Why why is it this bad? Like, I think Chelsea, where they missed the trick was because they signed a lot of players, but. They didn't sign a goal scorer. So they just brought in a bunch of dribblers and mm. Felix, Madueke, and 
Who's our Enzo. brother? Enzo, Enzo is deeper line player. So I feel Chelsea's problem right now is, and this is the problem when you're either trying to, if you're trying to win the title, if you're trying to not be relegated, if you're trying to like be better than the teams you're in and around, what you need is a goal scorer. Someone mm. that's just going to score the goals. Mm. I mean, losing Obama Young, like who's Chelsea striker? Where are the mm. goals going to come from? Mm. They're playing a bunch of different kids now. There's some for Fana. Obama, Obama, Obama Young actually time. played in the last game. He played against. Finally, this is the first time he's yeah. played in. Since when? In like, in, since last year. So I guess Aubameyang back in the fold, that's a wise move because mm. they actually just need someone that can put the ball in the back of the net. Um, Tottenham haven't been great either, but when Chelsea are so bad, like they're just giving everyone three points. I will. And it's crazy, there was a stat before that game. Chelsea have won every game that Tottenham have played against them in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, in that new stadium. Mm. Chelsea have won every single one up until that point. Wow. So Tottenham breaking that dock was definitely a big one for them. And I think it's interesting, Antonio Conte being out, he's still recovering mm -hmm. from the surgery. Mm -hmm. and, but they've, they've, they've had a couple it's of good results. I believe it's you know, four or five wins in a row right now. They've turned it around. Conte's right, bad vibes right. have left. And... Uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently. Still in the Premier League, the title race is still on fire. We've got Arsenal and City still going for it. They're, they both picked up wins over the weekend. Um, a good result for City, very convincing to get things looking more serious again. Yeah. Alan and Alvarez scoring, that's what they like. Yeah, definitely. And it, it, it's, it's Manchester City trying their best to, you know, solidify their spots, you know, and just push Arsenal to the end, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And it was good, as well, was good as well for Arsenal having won. So yeah. the title race is still, you know, it's still, still Still well and truly on, uh, but for Manchester City, of course they, they've been blowing hot and cold the past couple past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know if the the Man City that that turned up this weekend is the same Man City that will turn up, exactly. you know, at the next fixture. So, exactly. so that's that's left for us to see. Arsenal still flying um, a nice solid 1-0 victory over the weekend and um, I think it was big that the goal came from Martinelli because um, that's a player who his form has kind of dropped a bit and it's yeah. kind of been um, symbolic of Arsenal the way we felt that it's a young team that they're going to have these patches where, mm -hmm. where the players aren't you know, Stepping as a younger for of exactly, bowing on that pressure. Yeah, exactly. Sort of, the yeah. pressure, like keeping their form flat the whole way. It's really hard for young players. So yeah. anything happens that they can be stabilized. And Martinelli was a player that looked like he was going through those problems. They brought in Trossard to give him some competition. So a goal for him this weekend would be something. And, and it was it was it was great. It was great actually because both Martinelli and Trossard played and they, mm -hmm. uh, and they were both Ateta found a way, Ateta yeah. found a way to, to mm -hmm. use both of them because normally um whenever Martinelli played or whenever he did not play, Trussard was used, on, you know, to you know, on that wing, you know, just to replace, mm -hmm. uh, to replace him. But this time around, Trussard was able to play in that number ten mm -hmm. position, and then uh, Martinelli on, on on the left side. And yeah, very very good for Martinelli. Of course, mm -hmm. those um, FPL managers that have sold him mm -hmm. would now be looking at okay, yeah. is, is he coming back into exactly. form, you know, uh, and stuff. Right. So that is um. Generally, what's up in England at the moment? No, there's no, relegation no, we stuff. About Liverpool. Okay, so there was another game: Liverpool versus Newcastle, Crystal really? Palace. Liverpool versus Crystal Palace. Um, not really much to say about that game, really. Um, the Liverpool group chat was as silent as if we didn't <laughs> even play. Um, yeah, so nil no, nil. No, um, I don't even know how to summarize that game for Liverpool. Like, not much happened. Like, it was mm. like the match started. I mean, I, I feel like I feel like Crystal really Palace. Happened. Crystal Palace was the worst place to go to for for Liverpool in this period where they've had, you know, that bad. I think that's what this is. I'd rather not have gone to. You know, <laughs> and then they had a a good run of a good run of fixtures, yeah, two or three fixtures in the yeah. Premier League, and then they were hoping, okay, let's come back yeah. to the Premier League and then just refine that form that mm -hmm. we had. But James Milner starting. I, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's, mean, it's, it's 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 not a good sign. I guess Klopp is trying sign. to um, he's trying to refresh things and like give players a jobs without spending when to sign players. Mm. So maybe benching someone can get in the head. Mm. He has to not mm. play Bachetti because he's been playing so many games. He came on, but he's a young player playing too many games. Fabinho's form is so hot and cold. Thiago is injured again. Arthur might have come back. So it's what I've been saying for it's probably a year now. The midfield is just cursed, and you're gonna keep seeing these problems. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting how. Given all this and how bad the season is for Liverpool, Liverpool have two games behind on Tottenham. If they win those games, it'll be three points behind Tottenham. Uh, but one of those Bitter games Bow. is against Manchester United. Fair. Who have that? that Bitter Bow. Well, how many games are there left? Like 15 Gap games left. 15, so 15, a three 15, point 15, gap 15. to overtake with 15 games, like, you don't even have to be good to do that because yeah, no one's really good. You just, just like win one, chief, draw one. The Chiefs just have to fall in your own favor yeah. and you win, they lose one weekend and you win that weekend. Like. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's about who's going to stumble to the fourth position. So yeah, keep an eye on that. The race for top four is now over. Newcastle still wants it. Tottenham still wants it. 
Liverpool still won. And I believe with Newcastle having lost the Carabao Cup final, they yeah. might. Yeah, yeah, they haven't won a trophy in now sixty something years. I mean, that doesn't <laughs> build much confidence in players. But we'll see how that goes. So we're going to quickly move to the French league, where um, Lionel Messi has hit another record in his outstanding career. He scored his seven hundredth goal in a top five league, and um, yeah. The record, um, I know if, if you realize recently, Ronaldo hit that 700 mark a few months ago, and now yep. Messi hit the 700 mark, and they're still chasing each other till now. A very good goal. And something I really like coming out of Paris is the relationship between Messi and Mbappe. Like, they look like, you wouldn't believe that they were just going, battling it out at the World right, Cup, and after right, the World Cup, Messi right, tried right. and Mbappe wasn't really having the handshake. But now, it's like Mbappe has seen the light, and... Yeah, so I, I think it's very interesting, because this thing, you, you, we can trace it back to even before the World Cup, when Mbappe right. felt like, okay, maybe Messi and Neymar were trying to knock him off his perch, mm -hmm. you know, as the, and as the golden boy, and, like, you, you know. see, like, Messi and Neymar, the little click, and... Do you understand, Mbappe having was, played at Baka yeah. and, and mm -hmm. things, but it's good, it's good to see, actually, mm -hmm. and I... And I you know, we, we sort of criticized Mbappe for not learning his place, right? Yeah. This is Messi, mm -hmm. right? This is not just any other kind of player. This is literally mm -hmm. Lionel Messi. You're not going to argue. argue yeah, yeah, if you're not going to be on, you're not you're, exactly. So I feel like maybe he has come to mm -hmm. come to terms with, with yeah. the facts of the matter, and you know, yeah, good for him. He's playing well. Messi's playing well. Or oh, oh, it's, it's yes, the great for PSG, PSG. Great for their title push, and great for the prospects of turning it around against Bayern with. Messi and Mbappe on song, that's the problem for any defense. For, most definitely. Messi playing passes in for Mbappe. Like, if I had to drop fantasy football, I'd pick a player to play the through ball and a player to run on the end of it. <laughs> Messi, Messi and Mbappe, and Mbappe after watching definitely. football. So that should be, if I'm buying, I'm shaking right now. 90 okay, minutes of sure. that would be a big problem. Sure. So let's, is, let's just hope that both of them are fit. I think they should, I mean, they're both fit now. Um, I guess we're hoping if Neymar is fit, but. Neymar being fit might even ruin the balance. Maybe they're better off getting another workhorse mm. in there and letting Messi and Mbappe just, just one, yeah, two true, punch them out because that is more true. than enough quality. But yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. That's definitely the biggest game in the Champions League left. This, yeah. That's still kind of up for grabs. So yeah, keep an eye on that. Let us know your comments in the your thoughts in the comment section. We'll probably circle back to this conversation closer to the time though. We have another league that we we started kind of caring about the um, Saudi Arabia <laughs> league. Saudi Arabia, league. Yeah, started true. finding its way into our timelines. And um, <laughs> yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo. I guess when he first arrived there, there was a match against PSG losing to Messi, and it seemed like yeah. he looked a little bit off. But mm. it's clear that he's like he's showing that he understands the league, and at that age, he's going to walk all over. Like these players are not. At his level, at right. 50, he'll probably get goals in this league. 100%. So yeah, he's got 10 goal involvements in his last six games, and he's got two hat-tricks in his last three matches. Like, he's taking the place at this point. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's more or less like staff padding at this yeah, point. Yeah, bro, he's, he's just does. he's just he's just banging in those goals, and I I feel like just you know good for him. Just it will keep him happy, mm -hmm. right? He he'll feel satisfied mm -hmm. scoring these goals and being able to extend that record, right? Exactly. He's still the highest goal scorer in the history of the sport mm -hmm. officially. Mm -hmm. So, you know, good for him at the end of the day. And massive, massive, massive props to, to the Saudi Pro League management mm -hmm. bringing in the, like, you know, somebody like Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. Because nobody gave any iota of like, we literally did not care about that league, yeah. I promise you. Yeah. And now we're seeing it on our timelines. Mm -hmm. We're literally mm -hmm. watching highlights on YouTube. We're yeah. literally caring about who's scoring, what's happening. So yeah, very, very good stuff happening over there in Saudi. Yeah, great for the league. Um, his agents have spoken recently about how he might still retire in European football. That remains to be seen. We'll see how that, yeah, we'll see how that plans out. Years. So that is our roundup on football since the last time we saw. Uh, there are other things happening in other sports that we don't give as much attention, but they do be happening. Um, so the Formula 1 pre-season testing has begun. Yes. Um, Yes, Formula One pre-season testing has, you know, has started, and from what I've seen, I think Aston Martin might be, you know, it a team goes. to actually look look, look out for. Mm. I just hope that I just hope that it's not a case of okay, testing goes well, pre-season testing goes mm. well, and then when it comes to the actual season, yeah. you know, you, you, you're down bad. But of course, we'll be we'll be we'll be looking forward to seeing the uh, the, the the regular, you know, the the, the what the they call suspects. them, the usual suspects, I beg your pardon, you know, the Mercedes, the Red Bulls, and, and Ferrari. somehow, after somehow, Ferrari the Ferraris. After the last season, exactly. was really good. Yeah, and, and of course, do not forget, season five of, of Drive to Survive is also, I'll, I'll definitely be looking out for that. It's, mm -hmm. it's out on Netflix, and we're going to see how 
you know, last season panned out. Yeah, you know. yeah. In, uh, it's it's in just in interesting. Yeah, I think that's a very, very interesting, uh, interesting series. And um, before we wrap up, um, I know we're on YouTube, so um, this is like Jake Paul and Tommy Fury's platform. They run this show, so why not speak about them? Um, Tommy Fury and Jake Paul finally had the boxing. Mm. I don't know if I'm gonna call this about or a <laughs> entertainment boxing, whatever you call it. Um, and yeah, this has been a fight that has been long in the making. Um, cancellation, blah blah. And um, yeah, Tommy Fury won that fight um, by split decision. We probably have wanted a knockout, but in, <laughs> in my opinion, I knew it was going to happen because I mean I saw I saw a a, a face off between the two of them mm. before the bout, before yeah. the fight, and Tommy Fury literally stunned Jake Paul, right? Mm. Like they were just they were just going at each other, you mm. know, and then he literally stunned him and Jake Paul was, you know, all over the place and I was like, yeah, bro. So yeah, um, shout true. out to Tommy Fury. Um after living in his brother Shadow, Tyson Fury, obviously, like he'll be to appreciate this W, like it's trending worldwide. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm sure when we see the pay per view numbers, we'll actually be surprised. These but there's, there's a lot of that. money behind this. Yeah, guys, so you would have made a lot of money from this and raked in a lot of cash. So, yeah, True. congratulations to both fighters. And yeah, I guess we'll, we can touch on this later. But I actually think it's exciting how just social media is able to create like this whole other world of sports. Mm, like, mm, maybe mm. we might see a social media Premier League on there and actually see people. Very possible. <laughs> like, very, very, possible. Call very, very possible. But, but yeah, looking forward is... to this week, actually, there's mm, FA Cup mm, fixtures. Before we go, yeah. There's FA Cup fixtures and then there's Premier League fixtures as well. Mm -hmm. so, Liverpool, um, games in hand will be played. Liverpool, yep. we play Wolves. Um, Wolves is side in pretty bad form. Um, a win here will be key for Liverpool. That will make it four games on beating the Premier League. And I guess when you now look at that, when you step back and look at that, the Real Madrid result doesn't seem that bad because... I mean, it is just as bad, but you can take some positives out of this period <laughs> if we can get this result. Yeah, true, true. Nine points in 12 games is a great run it's of form. It's a great run of form. That's really true. That's probably anyone else in Premier League during those four games. So, yeah, that's a big game. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Like Klopp said, every single game is a Champions League qualifier for Liverpool, so hopefully the players play like it. And, yeah, that's yeah, all. That's I'm definitely. out. Definitely, of course. Any and, words? Uh, of course, Carabao Cup winners, Carabao 2023 Cup winners. I will be facing West Ham United in the FA Cup. As a, as a Manchester United fan, with the, with the amount of, of games we are playing, I believe it's too much at this point. We, but we're at Old Trafford, so it's not likely we'll lose, mm. right? But let's just leave. Let's leave one. <laughs> let's leave one and, and, and allow these guys, because Rashford is currently playing through an injury. Mm. He, he, he hurt his shoulder yesterday in the I Carabao I saw Casemiro too rubbing his shoulder yeah, at so, half time. So these, these are the things, right? You don't want to work these players to the bones mm. and then next season they're not able to put, put, yeah, put up yeah. the kind of numbers that they put up in the, you know, this season before. So yeah, let's just, let's just step out of one, I beg, and, and, and then move on. All right, so that's an episode. Let us know your predictions for all Wednesday's games in the comment section. Like this, subscribe, share with your friends, and see us next time. Of course. See you later. Peace.